Lime Wame insists there was no massacre at the Lekki Doe Gate. Instead, tags it as a massacre without bodies. And President Muhammadu Buhari praises David Umahi over his defection to the APC, says it is based on principles. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladendi. Welcome to Plus Politics. It's, it's, uh, let's look at so many issues that are in the front burner. In response to a rep report done by CNN on the shootings of NSAS protesters, the federal government has reiterated that there was no massacre at the Lekki Toll Gate, Lagos, on October 20, 2020, as the report suggests. This was stated by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, who added that this is the work of purveyors of fake news. He said what was alleged to have happened could either be social media massacre or at best massacre without bodies. Joining us to look at this, whether you call it satire or you call it irony, we have here in our studio Mr. Leonard Ebute, who is a social commentator. Good evening, Mr. Leonard. Thanks for having me. How are you? And joining us uh, via Zoom, uh, still in Lagos, we have Alester Wilkos, who is also a public affairs commentator. Good evening, Alester. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm delighted to be here this evening. Okay, we, we will do something before we get into the first... Uh, I almost said before I threw my first bullet, but I remember that <laughs> we are dealing with shootings this time around. Okay, let's take a listen at that report done by CNN. Then later on in the program, we'll also listen to what the Minister of Information and Culture did say. Let's watch a bit of that report, then I'll be back. Now, peaceful protests, Abi. Yeah. Okay, make everybody the same. Now, where's the flag? Godson. He was one of the demonstrators having fun live streaming the event. Yeah. He, like many others, gathered in a peaceful demonstration of discontent after of what they called systemic police brutality and corruption. What Godson and the protesters did not know is that the army is already on its way. This is Bonnie Camp a military garrison on the south side of Lagos. We know through analyzing footage they left at 6.29 p.m. heading towards Lekki Tollgate. We can see here the Nigerian government forces approaching. The protesters are gathered on the other side of the gate. As Nigerian forces get closer, you can see shots. At 6.43 p.m., we start hearing gunfire. We know this from the timestamp and data on this video. Here's another angle. They are releasing fire. They are releasing fire. Nigerian authorities say they fired blanks into the air and not at protesters. But CNN obtained video that appears to show the army shooting toward the crowd. Here and at the top of your screen, here. In the midst of the chaotic scenes is DJ Switch. A Nigerian celebrity and activist, she is broadcasting live on Instagram. I wanted people to see what was happening. I didn't want anybody to come and, and twist the story. Witnesses tell CNN ambulances were stopped from entering by Nigerian authorities. You can see here people at the scene trying to conduct CPR. Please explain to me how, in which part of, of the world do you um do you do you go to a protest with life with life bullets everybody look at this these are the bullets that were falling that were falling by our side that were were dodgy bullets cnn has verified that these bullet casings are from live ammunition they are of mixed origin some are serbian this one from 2005 
Nigerian military sources verified to us that these are munitions that are currently in use by Nigeria's army. And in collaboration with the Balkan Investigative Reporting Network, we were also able to procure Serbian export documents, proving that Nigeria purchased weaponry from Serbia for almost every year between 2005 and 2016. The shooting continued past midnight. Eyewitnesses tell us it wasn't just the army. At this point, they say police arrive and open fire. My hand is broken, my leg is broken, and police are still shooting at us. And if I don't make it through the night, let it be known that I died fighting for our freedom. So why were live rounds used? Okay, uh, that's just uh, part of the report uh, done by CNN. I think you can still watch The Fool if you haven't. So let me start with my guest here in the studio. Later on, we'll be looking at um, what the minister said. Do you have any reason to say that that report was not totally the truth about what happened? You see, again, um, let's, 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 I wasn't there. So let's even trace the fact that the government agrees to, right? So firstly, they claimed the military didn't, didn't, wasn't there, and then they reversed it to say they were actually there. So it's fact number one, the military was at the venue. Second thing they agreed to was that the military did fire. They said they fired blanks. Okay, let's agree that they fired blanks. Third, the governor of the state went to hospital and saw people with bullet wounds. Over 20 of them, he claimed, eventually said two died. So whatever they fired, right, caused injuries, right? This is me and you not being there. The rules of logic is simply that whatever can injure, whatever can penetrate, if you can confirm you saw over 20 people injured with bullet wounds, I'd rather believe the guy that says some of them died. This is pure logic. So, and when you looked at the CNN footage, they showed clear evidence that those gunshots were aimed at protesters at some points in the footage. Now, it doesn't matter if you know a little bit about guns, whether they are blanks or live at that range. Blank bullets do kill. Blank bullets do penetrate. If you do a little research, you will see that in a certain protest in Ireland not too long ago, over 11 people died from blank bullets being fired into a crowd. Okay. There is a Geneva Convention against the use, uh, around the use of blank bullets and how to fire them. So to the extent that the government agrees with these facts, I find irrefutable evidence that whatever injuries and deaths happened at Lekki Togate was caused by okay. the Nigerian forces. Now we'll continue from there. Okay, Alesta, I... I know you have also seen that report, so pretend that you've not listened to the Minister of Information and Culture. What do you make out of that report done by CNN? Actually, I did, I've never been, I've not, I'm just hearing from you now because I've been at work all day. I just heard from that the minister has refuted. So I've never, I've never heard from the minister. Okay. Um, so I've never heard what the minister said. And uh, sincerely, uh, I, I want to give an opinion if I'm, if I'm today the minister, the kind of people I will have given to that report. And I'm happy that my brother is talking about logic. Because neither me, you, nor uh, 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 the CNN reporter was there. Now, the CNN reporter used footages that have been circulating in the media. That most, majority of it, maybe 90% of the footage has been discredited even before now, or reversed. Uh, and I want to correct my brother. Uh, the governor never said he saw people with gunshot injuries. He saw people that were injured. Injured. He never said, I, I mean, except you have that footage, uh, you can correct me. I stand to be corrected. The governor said he saw people, about 12 people, not 20, about 12 people injured in various hospitals. So that is to that extent. But if, I, if, if you can give me another, I mean, a footage that will correct me, I'll okay. gladly accept that. So go down, going back to logic, now, most of the videos that circulated right from when the incident occurred, all the footage, most of them have been refuted. For instance, that of uh, Nola Badmos being administered PCRO on the spot and being carried has been refuted. 
the one of a, 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 a bloodstained uh, Nigerian flag, all, most of that has been refuted. So I do not understand where the logic is coming from again. If we go, to, if I don't have the time to analyze this video, then we we'll begin to debunk them one after the other. So I'm, I'm also believing in logic. And the army has gone to the uh, tri tribunal to say, look, we are there. Nobody is controversing that the army was not there. Nobody is controversing it. Unfortunately, why some will look chicken out or why some will look why the governor got scared for whatever whatever reason and made his first comment. I cannot defend that. <laughs> but that is within him and okay. the realm of, uh, uh, of, of his office. Alessa, let me do you a favor. But, but, I respond to him. Let me do you a favor. Uh, and that there was no shooting at Lekki. There was shooting at Lekki. That has been established long time ago. That there was no shooting. No, that there was shooting. There was okay. shooting at Lekki. Okay. Dolgate. Quickly, uh, let me let me quickly uh, make you listen to what the minister had said because that's going to be the next phase of our conversation. The Leonard said he wants to react to some of the things you said, but before then, let's take a listen to what the minister of information did say. Engage in incredible sensationalism and did a great disservice to itself and to journalism. The first instance, CNN, which touted its report as an exclusive investigative report, sadly relied on the same videos that have been circulating on social media without verification. This is very serious, and CNN should be sanctioned for that. The federal government will therefore not accept a situation in which some so-called human rights bodies and journalist media organizations will continue to harass the security agencies over their, over their roots during the crisis. Soldiers, policemen, and other security agents deserve commendation, not condemnation. Except, of course, their critics are saying they are not human beings and that their own rights do not matter. It is depressing and demoralizing to continue to vilify men and women in uniform who themselves were victims of senseless violence unleashed by hoodlums. Okay, that was uh, the Minister of Information and Culture. Leonard, I promise you, you will react. So now that you've listened to it, uh, I'll come back to you. Quickly, what do you have to say to what he said and bringing in what the minister also said, which sounds much like uh, what Alessa did say? Okay, so, so first of all, uh, maybe you should again listen to some of those statements at the hospital again for yourself. There were several press conferences that he did, so that's fact. It's in the public domain. You should also visit the hospital, like some of us did, and talk to the doctors in those hospitals. You would also see several interviews on that. Thirdly, the video from CNN, CNN was clear. It said CNN verified videos. So maybe there are one million unverified sources that have been proven otherwise, but the specific ones that CNN is using here, they've put their name behind it. And Lai Mohammed did um, give them the accolade of being a credible organization. Let me also draw your attention to the person that did that report, Nima El Bagger, is an award-winning journalist in investigative journalism. So, in terms of credibility, if we are to put the credibility of Lai Mohammed as a person and CNN as an organization or Nima on the line, you and I know where we would lean towards to if we are to put our money on it. Okay. I, I, will, I, I, will totally, I will totally disagree with that last statement, my brother. I will totally disagree with that last statement. And uh, it's not a, a patriotic statement. Of there is no patriotism where truth no, let's, is let's, on the line. Let's, let's allow him react. You will okay. Okay. I, will, I will let that because it's your opinion. I will let that because it's your opinion. The fact remains that uh, uh, Nina, whatever awards he has won, those footage does not belong to CNN. They are footages that were picked from the social media. CNN is a credible organization. I have no doubt. It, 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 my, my TV is permanently glued to CNN, especially because of this Trump-Biden uh, issue. It's a credible organization. I, that is not in doubt. But the fact remains. Now, if you listen to the, to the, if you listen to the report from BBC, when their staff their correspondents and their camera were on ground in Lekki. 
Now, that report has been circulating. I'm sure you, you have not, maybe you have not seen it, or you've not heard from it. If you listen to the BBC reporter that was on ground in Lekki, and what she said that she saw, and what she said that happened at Oyibo and outside Lekki, they have totally in converse. My brother, you talked of rationality. Look at those videos and ask yourself a question. Can somebody be admitting CPR under the hail of bullets if there was truly a massacre? Can somebody be off, be, be, can somebody be, be carrying out a CPR in under the hail of a bullet? Can okay, somebody Alistair. be, be shot, be, uh, can somebody be Alistair. peaceful? And Alistair. in the lucky toll gate, where the army, a lot of men, and he says now. we are peaceful Alistair, can and you the police are shooting at us. Yeah, I brought, I, we are talking about common sense here. Alistair, and let us deal Alistair. with common sense. Okay, let's, let's continue said, with the common I, sense. I, let's continue with the common sense. I'm going to, please, let's try and moderate this discussion so that we, our viewers can really enjoy the conversation and go home with the truth and nothing but the truth. Still on what you said, I think three of us agreed that initially the army said they were not at Lekki and they later admitted that they were at Lekki. You also agree with me that the governor said there was no single death. Later on, we found out that it was one and probably later two. Now, we are looking at the sequence of report, the sequence of these testimonials. Don't you think there is reason for us to think that government is trying to hide something? And I'm repeating myself. Why Governor Songolu was rushed and quick to deny the army or who invited them remains on Governor Lu's table to answer to Nigeria. Okay. Maybe he chickened out in a civilian, maybe he was scared and thought there was so much uh, bloodshed which he didn't anticipate. And so he took that night to go around hospitals for him to get a clear picture. And then again, that what also talked about the first death was collaborated by the BBC reporter that said he saw one person gasping for breath out of out of stampede. That is what the BBC reporter who was on ground said. Now, if you if, if you flip it the other way around, when did it happen? The first report was from uh, DJ, whatever he, her name is, 78 bodies were picked up and dropped her at name, the end of the army. Her name is DJ Sweet. Later she counted to yeah, later she said 15 bodies. Later she said seven was picked up by her. Okay. By I'm, her. I'm coming her back to you. And she had no blood stain. There was no blood stain on Alexa. the ground. There was no blood stain anywhere Alexa. on the massacre. On her body. I think we can control breast. our emotion. All the men, all, I'm coming. All the people that they said died. On the, all recounted. All the people that we have known to have Okay, Alexa. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Leonard, let me look at some of the argument against that CNN report. And I'm sure you've seen some of them. And probably that's one of the reasons why you're here today. Yeah. Uh, beyond what the minister said, some have also looked at the word massacre. And for me, this is my personal opinion now, and I think I'm entitled to it, that whether the word was misused, the fact is people were killed. But how do we, you know, bring this story together to say that CNN does not have any kind of ulterior motive because if you look at some of their accounts, the word massacre, I don't know whether, but CNN has come out to say they stand by their report. Maybe they don't also want to own up on the use of word. Where are these bodies? You have also met with some of these victims. Where, why are they not opening up? How true is the report that they have been threatened not to open up? Oh, well, um, those will still remain, your last question, that will remain at the realm of um, um, speculation, right? But I stick with what we all agree on, and that is people got shot. Uh, the argument as to Songolu saw people injured is an irrelevant argument because the cause of the injury is also in the public domain, right? And... The first people, the only people to begin shooting are like where the soldiers. See, at the risk of sounding like I'm here to demonize in the Nigerian army, my father wore that uniform. It is with a great sense of regret and embarrassment that some of us are seated here to look the Nigerian army in the face, to look 
the, a minister of information in the face and tell him you lie. And you lie on matters that, that the, the whole essence of the NSAS process, I mean, pro protest in the first place, was because of a failure of government. Now, instead of the government rising up to, and the government agrees with that failure by ending SARS. So it is not as if there's an argument that people are out to just demonize an organization of government. The government agrees that that institution had outlived its usefulness. And so if you agree that the objective of the protest is in the right direction, you should also own the outcome. Nigerians will be happier to have heard an apology from the Minister of Information around whatever happened in like even if nobody died for god's sake it, there is clear evidence that very many people died in nigeria the fixation on lekki is not only mundane and petty it cheapens the whole apparatus of government as an organ for for safeguarding lives and property it is incontrovertible that people died in nigeria as a result of the nsas pro 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 protest 51 of them 51 of them confirmed to be civilians. 11 of them confirmed to be people in uniform. This is what a minister of the Federal Republic should be addressing. So the fixation no. on a CNN report that, has, that goes to re-emphasize the fact that peaceful protesters were attacked, irrespective of the accuracy of the report, it is beneath a national officer to so speak. To call that news agency irresponsible is almost like the pot calling the kettle black because it is irresponsible to deny Nigerians the fact that your people, civilians, okay. demonstrating their rights were assaulted. This is what lies should have addressed. And for him to go petty is a reflection of how Nigeria okay. as a country Before feels I go about to Alexa, citizens. I know Alessa wants is. to corroborate with some yeah, of your please, points. I want, to, I want to react to that, please. Okay, go for ahead. For time's sake. Look, my brother made a very valid point, and which, is, I, which I think should have been the, the subject of discourse, even by the so-called CNN reporter. Because you asked a good question, which he didn't answer. You, you talked about what is a massacre. If you ask him, why are people not coming up to show the bodies or to demand the bodies of the loved ones? He, he, he avoided it. Now, people have... I didn't avoid it. I just thought, I just thought it wasn't relevant. Lekki, and forgetting the thousands, the, the other security agents, policemen that were killed and dehumanized, stations that were burnt, other civilians that, uh, that were attacked, that, I mean, that attacked themselves or they were killed in Oshodi, in other places. These are the ones we know. But you are, everybody is not fixated on a phantom massacre because a DJ switch or whatever you call her name wants to make the world so stop, stop saying whatever you call her name. Her name CNN, is DJ Switch. As a credible organization, has fallen below there because that statement, those pictures were not theirs. I would rather believe the BBC, whose whose uh, whose reporter was on ground. And okay. let's talk about Alistair. the twenty-two policemen that were killed in the United States. Yeah. Uh, Alesta, I, I, I don't have to shout to tell you to allow me to talk. A phantom fabricated massacre that have not seen a body, I have not seen a, a victim Alesta, up to today. Why are we being... Alesta, that, that's a question that uh, we will unravel, we will stay with, and it's something that uh, I consider also relevant. While I agree that uh, no life is worth being killed, we we'll also want to know those people who have been coerced, those people who have been gagged not to express their pains and the rest. And don't also forget that as we speak, uh, the, there is a corona inquest asking for people to come and identify bodies in the morgue. But trust me, we'll stay with that. I, I, I'm looking at the issue you raised while you're trying to respond because of time. Now, you raised the issue of the uniform men also matters. And uh, you raised the issue of the fact that these killings somehow, somewhere, I also heard the police came in to shoot. And a lot of people have been saying things about the army, the army. Any correlation? Oh, well, um, what led to it and how can we avert this kind of a thing again? You, you, you see, um, I, I want to sift out the noise, right? Um, whether it was the army, it was clear that the army came to shoot. We had videos of that. There were allegations that the police also came to shoot later. We don't have videos of that. And the CNN report pointed that out as opinions of uh, uh, um, eyewitnesses. Okay. They, didn't, they didn't claim to have verified that. 
But the point is this. When 62 people die in your country, it is a massacre. Irrespective, All yes, irrespective of where it happened. So the fixation on the semantics used by the CNN reporter is unnecessary. People died, and they died during that protest. I am happy with the word massacre. If there's a stronger word to use so that the message goes home to the people that were responsible for those deaths, those are the kind of strong words we need to Beautiful. use. The CNN reporter does not owe us the burden of patriotism. It's a news agency. It's not even a Nigerian news agency. So to, 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 to require that level of patriotic tendency to, to minimize from them while the, the country as a whole is minimizing the death of their citizenry or denying the legitimacy no of the, the claim is nonsense. And we really need to look at that. So, so, so to expect UNN to be as accurate as you want or to believe the BBC because you like their version of the story is, is not the issue here. The issue here we are, is that we are, we are talking about a response from a minister of information speaking for the government okay. who absolutely ignored the fact that people died in this country but fixated on an aspect of a report they claim to have. Now, let me throw in one last point here. Guess what? The Nigerian government does not have an alternative story just yet. The judicial panel of inquiry hasn't finished sitting. So where is Lai Mohammed getting his own set of facts from? Uh, interesting. Uh, probably I would not help him to respond to that. But he made an allusion to that, that he will believe General Taiwo, who is the testifier at the panel of inquiry, who said that... Uh, who is an accused, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, who you said... You will believe the accused. Whichever But you way. will not believe the accuser. Uh, the accuser. That's the kind of country okay. that we're living in. Leonard, I, I can is, feel is your emotion. To, to round up? Yes, I'm going to allow you round off now. And the question yes. is... Yes. The question okay. is... Ask me, okay, ask your question, please. Sorry. The question is, and I heard that question on a radio program, and it left me almost weeping, that who killed Delegiwa to today? Who killed Bayo, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the journalist? Who killed... Um, what's the name now? The former minister. Bolaige. That's uh, Bolaige. And if the killers are still working free today, what lies the fate of those that were killed? So I'm saying, where is justice in this old thing? I, I, I'm, not, I'm not aware. I'm, I don't know who killed Gilegi or who killed all those other people. I should also ask my brother, if he said there was a massacre, question. who massacred 22 policemen in, in Port Harcourt? Who massacred policemen in Abu I uh, no, sorry, Oshodi area? He who has massacred, put all of them together. Who massacred the DPO, the DPOs that we are killed? So let us put it in the totality concept. There was, there was a protest that was legitimate. There was a protest that overstayed its usefulness and become a political tool. Mm -hmm. Nobody is against protest. The president recognized that there must be a protest. Now, the only, now and when the protest over, 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 overrun its, 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 its boundaries and then becomes hijacked, then those who organize the protest will be one to take full responsibility. And let's not forget something. There is a country that has law and order. As at, as at the time of Lekki massacre, of Lekki shooting, there was a curfew, and for which the people at Alausa left. The people at Alausa left. The people at Ikeda around about, they all left. They obeyed the massacre. That every right does not diminish the government right to make law and order. Before, June, before October 20th, October 19th was already rowdy. Police stations have been burned. Policemen have been, have, 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 been, have, have been killed, have been, have, been, have been molested. So let us also put them up perspective. Okay. After, after the poor Ikeja left, people at Alausa left, let people me, at Lekki. Okay, let me correct, let me that there was they were not violating so, their curfew. Curfew means you stay where you are and when the curfew starts. And let us be honest and fair to the nation. It doesn't mean you can't be outside. It's not a lockdown. Okay, Alessa, your point is clear and you insist on your point. Okay, Alessa, and, uh, you insist on your point. Leonard, trust me, this can never be exhausted. So the conversation... We can will... come back. We can come back next time, Kyle. We can come back. Okay. A coffee is not a lockdown. Want... They were not violating the coffee by remaining where they are. Let's... Okay, can we, can we have some video of quiet now? Thank you so much, Leonard Bute, for your position. And thank, thank you, you Alester Wilcox. Alester, I will look for you and we'll okay. talk about it's it. It's always my pleasure, my brother. It's always my pleasure. I should wait for each other. Thank Let you the conversation much. continue.
on all our social media platforms. But on a serious note, and that question was not for you to answer, but it's for us to have a, a deep reflection on how lives are taken and the state is there to give us answers to who is responsible. Once again, thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Pleasure. Yeah, and uh, to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, President Muhammadu Buhari responds to Governor Umayi's defection. These are more when we return. <laughs>